My name is Mendelis Mozuras, and today I'm going to talk about the three last conversations. At first, uh, let me give you a short intro about myself and the company that I work for. Here's a photo of me. Uh, that's me. And this is the office of the company that I work for. And that company is Vinted. I've joined Vinted uh, more than five years ago as a software engineer. Two, two and a half years ago, I became head of engineering and now lead the whole engineering at Vinted. And Vinted's mission is to make secondhand the first choice worldwide. It's quite a lofty goal. And to make this a reality, we've, we have a product that allows our members to buy, sell, and swap fashion and uh, kids' items. We're on our way to make secondhand the first choice worldwide. Uh, right now, we have almost 20 million members in 10 countries. We are based and we're founded in Lithuania here in Vilnius. And our biggest markets right now are France and Germany. Serving those 20 million members is a small engineering team. We have 32 members in our engineering team at Vinted. And at Vinted, we're big fans of lean software development and agile practices. We've been big fans of agile and lean for quite a while. And a year after I've joined Vinted, we started doing, for example, continuous, continuous deployments. And we do hundreds of deployments per day into production. Over my time at Vinted, we probably did something like a million of deployments total. Both Agile and Lean uh, are very much about people. And today's topic, uh, the three last conversations, will be about people, will be about conversations with people. This talk is divided into three parts. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to tell you about the three conversations that I, ha that I had. And then I'm going to go into a summary. So let's go. The first conversation. Uh, for that conversation, you're going to need a bit more background. So this is Vinted's history expressed in the form of transactions over the last five years. This is how many transactions our members uh, did over that period. Uh, those little Christmas trees, uh, those do represent Christmas. For some reason, uh, I'm not sure why, our members are not very excited about doing transactions during Christmas. My guess is, is that they want to spend their time with their families instead. Weird, huh? Um, so this five-year period is divided into three parts. As you can see, at first, we had a growth period. Uh, then we hit some difficulties. And during d these two years, uh, we had not a lot of growth. Uh, we even started declining a bit. And right now, we're back to growing uh, faster than ever before. The three, la the three conversations that I'm going to talk about today all happened in this small six-month window, right before we started growing again. And the first co conversation happened here. This conversation involves me, unsurprisingly, and uh, my lead. And you also need to know how I became head of engineering at Vinted. So my guess is that how, you, that how people usually become managers or leads, or however you would call it, at other companies, is that they go to their managers or leads and tell them, I want to be a manager. What do I need to make this happen? And then your lead tells you, all right, you need to make this happen, this happen. I'm going to help you along the way. Uh, that lead coaches you and helps you grow. And then one day when there is an open position, you become a manager. So that's 
not how it happened to me. Not at all. And how it happened to me was surprising. So vintage, vintage engineering was very flat throughout the years. We had no engineering leads or managers at all. And that worked very well uh, with three people, <laughs> with seven, <laughs> maybe with 15. Uh, but at some point, uh, when we had more than 20 people in engineering, that stopped working. We would get into these stalemates uh, where one group of people would like to do caching. That's my group of people. Like well, My group of people would like to improve caching, and that's the most important thing that we should work on. The other group of people would like to work on splitting everything into services and notification. And the third group of people would think that both of these group of, groups of people are stupid, and we need to do something completely different. Like We would have these stalemates, and we would have no way of moving forward, no way of finding agreement. So one day, our CEO, who was previously doing some of the handling of these types of situations, but, no longer, but could no longer do that because the company is more than 100 people and he has other stuff to do, uh, our CEO decided that he, that he needs to do something about that. And he went on and created a public discussion. A uh, public discussion where he asked everyone, okay, this is, this is, he listed the problems that we have within engineering and he, and he asked everyone in engineering to pitch in and suggest solutions. And people suggested various solutions and then he decided, okay, we're gonna have a lead. We're gonna pick someone and that person is gonna be responsible for engineering. And that's where the surprise comes in. Because uh, for some reason, uh, most of the people said that it should be me. And on one hand, that was very cool, uh, receiving such support and recognition from my peers uh, felt like truly great. Wow, that's, that's amazing, right? On the other hand, it was also very scary. Uh, very scary because I had doubts if I could really pull off everything that my peers would expect me to do. I had really big doubts. So after seeing uh, after seeing what everyone that everyone basically voted for me. The CEO extended the offer to, to me, like, do you want to be the lead? And uh, I've considered it, and I thought about it. And the primary reason why I initially joined Winted was because I wanted to grow and improve. And for these same, three, these same reasons, I've decided to accept and become head of engineering. And I strongly believe that leadership is something you learn, not something you're born with. Uh, I have, I've, I've started this uh, uh, meetup uh, called Vilnius Tech Leads, and this is the key phrase that describes that meetup. It's, leadership is something you learn, and I truly believe that. And that's especially true for me, uh, because I'm not a born leader, like far from it. For example, leadership is a lot about communication, and there's nothing more that I like to do after going home after work than plopping on the couch and reading a book. I'm an introvert. Like, I don't want to talk with all you people. <laughs> so, right, I, I was also uh, very much result oriented. Uh, that means that I was focused on results first. Like, uh, if I don't achieve a, a certain result that I want, I uh, would feel bad. So, uh, that's the background. Oh, sorry. 
That's the background for the first conversation. So, to summarize the background, the company is struggling, as you've seen. We're not growing anymore, the company is struggling. This conversation is happening a year after I became head of engineering, which means that I'm struggling because a year is not enough to become a good leader far from it. Oh, the company is struggling, I'm struggling, but the, good, the, but the good thing is that I have this lead who I trust very much and who's helping me to grow and improve and he's my support system, basically. <laughs> And guess what happens next? Um, one day, he invites me uh, to go for coffee after work. Um, and, we go, and we go to this coffee shop, brew, and uh, I think it's Pile Mogatve. And uh, he orders a cappuccino. I order green tea because I don't drink coffee. We sit down start talking, and then he goes off to, into making a performance review of some kind. He basically tells me how I'm doing, what I still need to improve on, uh, what I should still learn, etc. Sort of a short, quick, random performance review. And at this point I'm thinking, all right, Okay, well, good performance to you. He's making good points. And then he actually hits me with what he really wanted to talk about uh, that day. And that is that he's leaving. Not tomorrow, in two months, but he's leaving. My support system, like the person who's making all this craziness less crazy, is leaving. And after telling me these, this news, he then talks about possibilities. Like how him leaving will uh, allow me to grow, will allow, will allow me to do things that I could, no, could not do before, like how I'll be able to step into certain things that he was doing. And at that, and he had to repeat that a second time because the first time he was telling me that, I was not listening. I was struck by the news, I was looking somewhere to the right of him, and I was thinking, shit, this is bad. Um, so, yeah, um, that conversation hit me really hard. Uh, I felt very alone after it. All right, that was the first conversation. Uh, let's go into the second one. And the second conversation happened somewhere around here, approximately. And this conversation involves me and a software engineer. And it also involves a diving safe. So a diving save is when you try to save someone from leaving at the last possible moment. So in this case, the software engineer decided to leave and I was trying to stop him. And diving saves, obviously, are not good because if you have to perform a diving save, you've probably failed somewhere along the way. Like, ideally, you should be aware of what's going on in engineers or in any, any, anyone's life before he decides to leave and then you try to stop him in the last second. So, how did this happen? One day, um, I'm sitting at my desk working on something maybe answering emails, I don't remember. And our head of people comes to me and asks me, did you know that the name of the software engineer uh, decided to leave Vinted? No, I did not know that. <laughs> That's very surprising. I like that software engineer. I think that he's very good. 
like very good. Um, and I want to figure out what's going on. Why is that software engineer leaving? I don't want him to leave. And my mindset switches to, okay, he decided to leave? Challenge accepted. <laughs> You're not leaving. <laughs> um, so at first, I go to, uh, to, the, to talk with the lead of that software engineer, then go to the person who manages salary history at, at Vinted. And what I figure out is that that software engineer had no salary reviews during all the time he worked at Vinted. One and a half years, no salary reviews. And looking at his salary, he's obviously underpaid. And this is an obvious failure on our part. Like, this should not happen. And obviously after this situation, we made sure that this won't happen again. But yeah, so it's pretty bad. No salary reviews, one and a, one and a half years. He's clearly underpaid. No surprise he's leaving. Um, so then after figuring this out, I go to the software engineer. And I sit down with him and I talk with him. I try to understand uh, what is important to him and what would make him stay. And the only thing that I ask of him is to give me time. Like, give me a day to come back to you with a better offer. And, well, because that's not, not a big ask, he accepts. And I go back to my desk. Uh, I check with the CEO that I can make him the offer, the, the software engineer the offer that I want to make. I sit down and I start writing a story. And I open up Gmail and I write an email that I'm gonna send him, that software engineer, after we'll talk next. And what I do is that I write down the story of what would happen if he stayed. And that story obviously includes his compensation, but not only that, that story includes what would happen if he stayed, what would he learn and how would he, what would he accomplish and how he would grow. And I write down the story, I will send that email after we'll talk, and not four hours later, uh, I go back to him and sit down with him and tell him the story that I previously wrote down for myself. Uh, tell him the story, tell him about how his compensation changes. And uh, since it's Friday, that software engineer asks, okay, let me think this over over the weekend. You're like, you're making some good points. Um, and at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I did everything I could. I think the author is pretty good. I think I built a good story. I think that I, I and I think that he's gonna come back on Monday and he's gonna say, "I'm staying." Um, what do you think happens next? <laughs> so he came back on Monday and he said that he's leaving. Obviously. Diving save uh, unsuccessful. Now, the third conversation. And I know what you're all thinking right now. You're thinking, this cannot get any bleaker. <laughs> Well, <laughs> let me prove you wrong. So, the third conversation uh, happened somewhere around here. Again, approximately. And there is a saying, uh, the night is darkest just before the dawn. Uh, it's a common saying, 
You might have heard it in, in one of the Batman films. And in our case, uh, this was definitely true. Because this last third conversation happened uh, right before we did manage to turn it around and to start growing again. Um, to turn uh, the company around, what we needed to do is to completely change our strategy. And completely changing our strategy, Vinta's strategy, uh, meant that we'll, we also needed to change the company that executes that strategy. Uh, we needed to do a reorganization, which meant that we needed uh, to say goodbye to some really great people. We needed to re reorganize and uh, say goodbye to some really great people. And uh, so this was tough. And uh, from the start, so uh, the leadership team knew uh, from the start, from, from when the leadership team knew, knew that we we're going to do something like that, uh, we were very open about our company situation. Well, Vinted is a very open company in general. But specifically in this case, we try to be even more open about our company situation. So, for example, uh, months before we did the reorganization, everyone in the company knew how much money we have in the bank, how much money we're spending every month, and meaning how many months we have left if nothing changes. So I think when our CEO stepped in front of everyone and said, this week we're doing a reorg, and that means there's going to be less people in the company by the end of this week than there were at the start of it, I don't think that many people were strongly surprised because, well, they knew uh, where the company was at. And at first, uh, the leadership team who was, which was executing this change, we first talked with people who were staying. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the people that were staying will stay, really, uh, because we had a couple of rough years and uh, it's, it would be understandable if you would hear about this, okay, we're, gonna, we're doing this major change and you would be pessimistic about our chances. And after we talked with people who we wanted to stay, there were a couple of people who said, no, uh, I had enough. I would rather do something else. Let, let someone else take my place. And then we had to talk with people who, who were leaving. And uh, I personally had to talk, had five talks like that during a day. And uh, each time I reiterated uh, the, situa the situation the company is in, the way that we're changing our strategy. And uh, strongly uh, underlined that this is not about you because it wasn't, uh, because I really believe that it wasn't. Like I, I was talking with really good people who'd done good work. And, uh, and I think that in the end uh, it, it went okay as well as it could. And after that day, I went home this, this was the hardest work day that I ever had. And I sat down on the couch and uh, just turned up the music really loud. 
So these were the three conversations. Mm -hmm. now, now let's go into summary and let's talk about effort. So the first conversation, what I take away from that one, what, what, what is my key takeaway, is that in the end, what my lead did, like painting the future, painting the possibilities, is something that did work. Because I, I did not succumb to darkness, and I did stay at Vinted. And I, after a while, after I had to, time to process the change, uh, him talking about the future did help me. What I take from the second conversation, like, oh, mm -hmm. and what I take from the second conversation is the focus on the story. And this was not the only diving save that I ever performed, sadly. Uh, but I think that focusing on the story is something that, that works. And this is something that should not only be done after the person tells you that he's leaving. I think that everyone uh, should know what's, what is going to be their story at Vinted, not just when they decide to leave. And what I think went really, what worked really well for, for the third uh, conversations is that we as a company were very open and still are very open. I think that this kind of change could go really badly, but in our case, I think that it, it went as, as, as good as, as it could. And openness really helped with that. And what ties all these together for me and the key thing that I've learned uh, during last year is the importance of effort. So uh, despite my best effort, despite every, me doing everything that I could, my lead uh, left anyway. There was not much I could, I could do about that. And Despite my best effort, that, like, really my best effort, I truly believe, that software engineer left. And despite our, uh, our, our collective best efforts, we still needed to do that real. Um, I think that as a company, Vinted was, as a whole, very much result oriented. I remember how we would celebrate celebrate all kinds of achievements. So let's say mobile downloads hit one million, let's have some cake. We, we release some feature, let's have some cake and celebrate. Uh, and then when we hit the rough patch, we still tried to do that. We still tried to find things to celebrate, but a lot of those celebrations uh, felt hollow to me. I think that what we should have celebrated, we should have learned to celebrate our failures, and we should have celebrated the effort that we were putting in and trying to find uh, a way that works. There's this famous NCAA coach, uh, John Wooden. Um, he, is, uh, he, has, he had a truly remarkable career. Uh, he won something like seven or eight consecutive uh, titles in a row, and something like 10 or, 10 or 11 in total. When the, when the second best result is two in a row, so a truly remarkable career. Like he achieved tremendous results with, with his teams. But despite that, despite achieving these great results, results is not the thing that he values the most. 
he says uh, the results aren't the criteria for success. It's the effort that is most important. Um, and now I agree with him too. Thank you for listening. Questions? I see no questions here. I got one question. So okay. Software engineer was a direct report to you? No, he was not. Uh, he was not in my reporting line. Uh, why do you ask this question? Because if, if he would, so that salary team would be surprised for you. Yes. <laughs> what did this mean, counter offer again? Uh, could you repeat the question? Um, no, uh, no. In that case, his lead uh, did not get. So the question was: Did his lead? Did, did the lead of the software engineer in the in the second conversation gave a counter offer? No, he did not, and uh, he he just accepted the fact that the the software engineer was leaving. So why do you have that kind of situation? Because usually you have to count wrong, or maybe his lead didn't care about it. Or what? What's the problem with that? Okay, so the the, the problem. So the question is, what 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 was the problem in that case? And I think that the, there were a couple of problems. But the root cause was the fact that we, as a, we, meaning Vinted, uh, we w were a very young company. Uh, we were a y very young company who grew very fast and who had no idea what it needs to be done to uh, have a successful management layer. I think that was the root cause. <laughs> uh, the question is, would, would I have done anything differently? Um, well, I mean, where, sh where should I start? I mean, <laughs> looking back, I would, cha I would uh, obviously change, change a lot of things if I could, giving my current knowledge. Uh, it's it's really hard to pinpoint uh, j just a couple. I think that's all. For, uh, that that's all questions that we have. Thank you, everyone.